Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to show your appreciation for Right Angle, but be careful how you do that. Hi, I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, and this episode of Right Angle is brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. You know, men, way back in the day when I was in college, um, a lot of us had the clap. Um, it was a great uh, instrumental song by, what was it, Yes, I believe, that uh, played that song, and it was uh, very impressive. Um, now, at the University of Manchester in uh, jolly old England, uh, the se student union has just voted uh, by, a, by an overwhelming supermajority to ban applause in their meetings, and they've encouraged other student groups to do the same. Uh, now, Stephen Green, you might think that they were doing this as an accommodation uh, for the handicapped and uh, as a show of respect for those who, uh, who can't hear so that they want to have them express applause in a different way than just clapping. But that is not the case. In fact, they want to use what is called BSL or British Sign Language, more commonly referred to as jazz hands. <laughs> um, I'm not sure exactly how they do it in, in Britain. We kind of do it this way in American Sign Language, I think. Um, they, they want to use that because there are some people who suffer anxiety. And the whooping and clapping that happens in a round of applause uh, could be disturbing to them. Uh, Steve, are you glad to see the sensitivity of these young college students? And, and it's, is it a hopeful sign for our future that they're willing to show such deference? I am so sick and damn tired of having to live by the lowest common denominator. You know what? That, that's what it comes down to. You know, there's some. Why do you hate women so much? <laughs> there was something cute about this. I want to say, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But this whole idea that the entire world has to be brought down to the level of the most neurotic among us is absolute garbage. And free people, you know, liberty was born in England, and a, a, a free people should not have to live like that. Not over there. Not over here. And I'm so tired of being governed and talked to and regulated as though I were a, a, a neurotic moron. And I hope everybody else in this country is getting sick of that too. I know I am. Uh, more to your point though, Scott, um, I don't think this really has anything to do with that. Uh, I don't think it has anything to do, at least not uh, consciously, with protecting people who are anxious or whatever their BS excuse is this week to make people conform. I think what they're really trying to do here is to cover for crappy shows. Uh, when you see a show that ins that inspires you with just how great it is, you want to make some noise with your hands. You want to hoot and holler. If it's really great, you want to stand up so that noise gets even closer to the performers because that's how we say, wow, you stirred me, you moved me, you did something great up there, and I just I, I have to get up on my feet just so that the noise of my hands is just a foot and a half closer to you because that was so great. Well, you know, now we live in a, in an age of unfunny comedians and increasingly crappy TV shows and uh, musical artists whose musical talent is dancing. And I think this is a way to cover the, for the fact that people are less and less likely to want to get up on their feet and clap and stomp and hoot and holler for crappy shows. And, you know, our comedians now, they go after what's called clapter. That's where instead of making people laugh, they clap because they agree with you. And if I were an honest comedian, that would break my heart if clapter were the best thing I could inspire out of an audience that's supposed to be laughing at the comedy I'm providing. So I think this is just a BS excuse to cover for the crappy entertainment that we're getting. Well, uh, clearly, yeah. Clearly, Stephen Green is out of order, and um, I would bang my gavel. <laughs> I, I would bang a gavel and declare him as such, but it might startle somebody. Um, Bill Whittle, the uh, the student who proposed this legislation is one Sarah Khan, K H A N. Yes, yes, that Khan. Khan. <laughs> exactly. Um, and Sarah Khan is the uh, Liberation and Access Officer, apparently, of this this student union. Um, Bill, I, I don't know if they want to take it as far as Steve suggested and say that, you know, even at, at entertainment venues, but they were they were talking about this in the context of, the, you know, student government at least, and probably more than that. Um, how far should caring people like us go to accommodate 
the concerns of others. After all, you know, it was some years ago now that they that they shut down a lot of the residential mental health facilities in this country. So we have a lot of people, and I'm totally serious about this, we have a lot of people walking among us who have deep-seated psychological problems, and there are any number of things that could set those off. So how do you strike a balance between not being able to do anything, as Steve suggested, and, and still being willing to accommodate the needs of people who are troubled. I do not remember who said this. It might have been Churchill, but I suspect not. But they were in one of these long, long, long arguments about something or other. It may have been a scientist for that matter. Long, long, long argument. And this guy stood up and said, gentlemen, we can all determine the difference between a live horse and a dead one so let us please cease flogging the latter <laughs> and 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 that's really what it comes down to you know there is a there is a common sense standard that that most people have and this has crossed that line what these people are doing is they're virtue signaling themselves into oblivion uh, john boyd is the greatest military technician this country ever produced and the most important american you never heard of wanted to design a fighter airplane that could turn so tight that eventually it'd be able to fly up its own tailpipe. And that's uh, a kind way of, of putting what these people are doing. Um, this, this kind of thing is the kind of thing that's going to be the... This is the kind of thing that actually I, I look forward to and, and I think is tremendous. People need to see where this philosophy ends up. They need to see where the they need to see the fact that there is no end to this philosophy, that we will never reach a point where the left is satisfied that all social justice has been removed. Uh, as I like to say, you know, peak injustice in America probably occurred in the 50s or 60s, maybe in the 30s. And since then, as supplies of, of natural injustice continue to decline, uh, <laughs> synthetic injustice <laughs> needs to be manufactured in ever larger doses. And, and so synthetic injustice now has, has reached the point of, of this kind of thing. And as we pointed out last week, um, what happens when everybody's woke? What do you do then? If everybody is a vegetarian, if everybody is, in, is, is a climate, con, uh, climate uh, disastrous, if everybody is driving a Prius, if everybody is doing all of these things, then how do these people get to show that they're better than other people, which is all that this thing is all about, ever? How do they do it? Well, they start doing it, things like this. And then they're going to realize, you know, they're going to realize that this is actually extremely offensive for people who might be missing fingers and 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 they're going to think of something else and and they're going to just keep doing this until they fly up their own tailpipes and that day is not far off and and you know and that makes me exceedingly happy um this is as i say it is a process without end and at the beginning of the process it seems reasonable and at the beginning of the process, it is reasonable. The beginning of the process is things like handicapped people who are in wheelchairs can't get to certain events and, you know, well, you know, these people need to be, we, we need to take that into account. That's reasonable. But the final thing I'll say about this is the most important thing, and that is that I'm tired of living my life according to these weenies who have foisted their shriveled uh, 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 vestigial um, uh, Malig uh, amyg amygdalas upon us and are trying to have us uh, run by their standards. So, so for those of you who think I said something dirty, uh, let me just tell you that I did, but not what you thought. Um, the, amygdala is the, part of the, the amygdala is the part of your brain that is, the, the, the liberals love to say it's the fear center. It's not the fear center, it's the alert center. The amygdala is the part of your brain that's, that's triggered when some threat appears and then it goes downstream and, and decisions are made. Classic example of the amygdala is that in, in horror movies, they will often put a snapping twig in the grass sound, even if it's happening in a concrete basement, because we are hardwired to know that the sound of something behind us on the trail that we're not aware of is something we should pay attention to. Danger will and scientists have shown through science that, um, that progressives have, and liberals have, have far less developed amygdalas, their threat detection centers are smaller and the reason i'm making this point is because of science because science and science says that the fewer threats that a person gets the more sensitive that response becomes so when you have people who who fly into hysterics and start to weep and, and evacuate schools because some kid chewed a pop tart into the shape of a pistol and they look at this thing like call the 911 call hazmat 
Well, that's their amygdala response to fight or flight. They look at that as the same way as they would look at a leopard on, the, on their backs. SEAL guys, however, and other professionals uh, in the special forces don't react that way to uh, Pop-Tarts that are chewed in the shape of pistols. And the reason they don't react that way is because real guys with real pistols are shooting at them, and that's what they react to on that level. So my entire point of this little diatribe is to say that the further we go to make sure that nobody undergoes any stressful um, uh, inputs, you are not going to reach a point where, okay, now, we're, now, we've, now we've solved the problem. You're going to reach a point where people become more and more hysterical about smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller triggers. And I say bring it on because, um, because I think these weenies are just hilarious when you, when you let them go into full bloom, you know. Well, this is exactly what I was thinking um, earlier, Bill. It's if you had said this, thought it was the premise for a, a comedy sketch on a variety show back when we used to have variety shows. You know, yeah, wouldn't that be funny? Because there would, you know, Tim Conway would be in the room and he would have a fear of uh, sudden noises and things like that. And and so, you know, Harvey Corman would be giving That's a right. speech. That's and, right. Yes, Harvey Corman would be running the meeting. That's right. That, yes. That's right. And every door would yeah. be slamming, and 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 yeah, and there'd be woodpeckers and, on the trees the, outside. The sad yeah. thing about yeah, it is, get a lot and this of may sound callous to some, but when we stop laughing about things like that, we enable suffering by other people. Um, if you haven't already seen it, uh, at BillWhittle.com mm -hmm. and also at Bill Whittle's YouTube channel, um, there's an interview that I did with two guys, um, Fritz and Todd Edmonds. And Fritz is paralyzed, um, it, it, almost completely paralyzed, and has been for 33 years. It is the most fun interview I have ever done. These guys cu are cutting up the whole time, but they're very serious brothers who love each other and have a great idea that they came up with and, and have patented it and are manufacturing it. But the point, what it, it, this whole story made me think about that because I thought, you know what? In a large part, guys like Fritz are healthy because other people can joke with them about about a, a, a difficult situation That's that has befallen right. them. Yeah. We all have difficult situations that befall us. Some are more obvious than others. Some are more inhibiting than others. But there's something in everybody's life that you would think, oh my goodness, well, we certainly mustn't speak about that in jest. We need to speak about it in jest. We need to lighten things up a little bit. We need to have that sense of, it's its not gallows humor, but there's that sense of the fallen nature of man and the brokenness of this planet that has been the spur for humor from time immemorial. And we need to be able to do that. And so we should laugh richly at these people at the University of Manchester who think that they're helping somebody <laughs> by not Way clapping ahead, their hands. And at the same time, I think you can show compassion toward people. And if there's somebody next to you who is suddenly startled, you can be a comfort to that person, but you don't have to change the behavior of an entire society and basically say to them, yeah, the problem you have is so real that we have changed the behavior of everybody in the room to adapt to your vision of it. And thus we have stamped your experience as legitimate, reality that is healthy. We do that, we hurt the victim. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible.